Hello, my name is Nugrate, and this is a demonstration and overview of my Precision D-Orbit and Landing Script. This video will consist of three primary parts. The first part is calculating the D-Orbit burn, the second part is executing the D-Orbit burn, and the third part is actually landing. Links to timestamps for parts 2 and 3 will be in the description below the video should you choose to jump to those points. Now. Starting with the deorbit burn. The first thing of note, if you're interested in my efficiency, is my craft has 2,700 meters per second of delta V. Not that you terribly care, but it's kind of interesting to see how much I'll have in the end. So, we need a deorbit target. In this case, I have more or less randomly placed a waypoint on the surface of the planet. Uh, Mun, sorry. Um, called landing target unoriginally. So. Helps if I can spell my script name correctly. First thing of interest is that I don't actually need to type the full name of this waypoint. I can type a partial name, and the script has logic to parse waypoints and vessels and other things to try and find a match for a partial string. Ugh, I hate it when I misspell scripts. And so it's off. This is a basic hill climb um, I've made to do it. Uh, the evaluation for the hill climb is it's calculating the ballistic impact point on the MUN after the maneuver node here, and then just calculating the distance between that impact point and the landing target and the landing target accounting for the rotation of the MUN in the time it will take me to both go all the way around to get this maneuver node and then assume the maneuver node is instant and then fall all the way down and hit the MUN. The problem here is it's calculating for a purely ballistic trajectory whereas anyone who's, who's done actual landings will know you fall. You always fall short of your pure ballistic trajectory unless you also burn up. But that's handled in the landing script itself, not the deorbit script. I have plans to improve this, but they're complicated and I haven't implemented them yet. This hill climb algorithm is slightly different than the way you usually implement it. Um, instead of for all possible steps, taking the best step, I give it a order in which to evaluate the steps, and it takes the first of those steps that is an improvement. This order is time, then normal, so inclination change, prograde, um, faster, slower, uh, burns, and then radial, um, getting more loft in the trajectory if it needs to go far. The reason for this is delta V savings, having the strict order like the, and calculation savings actually, having the strict order and using a first thing to improve makes the iter makes the steps of the hill climb run much faster, and the particular order I've chosen to evaluate the maneuver node in tends to result in lower delta V maneuvers. As you can see, this script can actually handle quite an, incl an inclination difference between your orbit and your target landing site. This hand ability to handle this tends to get better as it gets higher, and that's the calculation done, and we're immediately into the ex execution for this maneuver node. This is a fairly standard script of mine for handling maneuver nodes. It's got some fancy time warp logic um, that I turn on to start the auto warping uh, by just toggling SAS on. Mm -hmm. Let's do that now. The first thing it does is it warps to five minutes before the maneuver node, then it aligns to within one degree of the maneuver vector and holds that for ten seconds. And 10 seconds. The maneuver node is, specifically I'm warping to 5 minutes before the start of the maneuver node. In this case I define the start of a maneuver node to be the amount of time it takes me to, to 
burn half of the delta V of the maneuver node. So that way I burn half the delta V before and half the delta V after and hopefully come up with a better match on the maneuver node than just dividing the total time. Burn start in, you know, 15 odd seconds. KSP is reporting uh, no estimated burn time. Uh, my script is reporting 1 minute 40 seconds on the burn. Once I'm within 30 seconds, part of what the script does is it actually locks out. Uh, it st actually starts ignoring the maneuver node. The reason for this is, is if I, you know, go in here and fiddle with it by accident or I get too close to a node I'm actually I'm actively fiddling with while the maneuver script is running. Um, I don't want to cause problems for myself by, you know, giving a really absurd node that I've missed in the past, that I missed in the past. So it'll ignore, and so it locks in the node once it gets within a certain time of the node. This is just to prevent me from futzing up the maneuver itself. And you can see here, um, our calculated trajectory predicted the orbit trajectory lands uh, ahead of the target landing site and the no and the burn is walking that it won't get all the way there because there's some inaccuracy in how I execute the maneuver which is inherent in anything that is going to be operating like this where you're predicting for an instantaneous change um, in velocity and you don't actually have an instantaneous change in velocity and I don't have any compensation in there to really deal with that error. At present, the, what I'd have to do would be I'd have to run some type of stage 2 refinement after I execute the maneuver to get more precisely what I want, but that's more trouble than it's worth when it, you know, aligns close enough for my case. And any error can be dealt with by the uh, landing script, which is firing up now. You can see it time warping. Um, this will warp until it's close to the ground. Close to the ground in this case is defined based on uh, vertical speed and the terrain gap. Now the terrain gap is interesting. What this script is doing is it's actually running a physics simulation for if I burn retrograde at this very second at I think 90% throttle is what I have it set for. Where will I come to a stop? And based on the difference between that point and the terrain below that point, I get my terrain gap. When this drops below 100 uh, meters plus some extra margin for the height of the craft, the engine fires. Now, because I calculated a purely ballistic trajectory, and you can see that here, almost right on top of it, that means when I start firing the engine, I'll actually fall short. But the script is aware of where that stop position is, where it wants to land, and so you can see it tilts up, and as you can also see, I was aiming, I was off to this side, so it pitched, so it yawed over to bring the trajectory more in line with the target. Um, in terms of errors, you can see that here we're about 400 meters off to one side and about three kilometers short of the target, which is why it's pitched up. You can see it continues to run the simulation all throughout the landing, um, which is why the terrain gap is fluctuating, which is informing what the throttle should be. That'll stabilize more as we get closer. It also has a running total of the delta V needed for this very second to come to a complete stop. Um, the time it'll take me, uh, as well as some stats on the simulation itself, and just still printing my vertical speed. So right now the simulation is, you know, taking about one second to fully compute the deorbit burn, and predicting that I'll need about 70-80 seconds to fully stop at this point. 
those numbers will continue to tick down. And you can see now most of the corrections are just, you know, very slight around there. You can see, you know, the heading and pitch raws are very close to zero. Those are how far off um, I am in terms of the pitch raw is am I how far short or long am I? The heading raw is the uh, left right error. And you can see the adjustments have dropped down to you know fractions of a degree and I'm within very short margins. I won't perfectly hit the target because um, I don't come to a perfect zero zero the I don't come to a perfect zero velocity. Uh, stopping point, I cut it a bit short, which means I've still got some residual velocity that tends to add about 20 or so meters of error. And now we're about to enter the final hover phase. Let me just try and get a good look at camera angle on that. Once we enter that, I'm just running um, the basic linear acceleration math for uh, you know, straight line acceleration. What does my speed need to be to come to a perfect stop at the terrain surface and then firing the engine at just the right moment? I stop a bit high, mostly so I can hover softly down. And that is my precision to orbit and landing scripts. Uh, bit more accurate than I usually am, within probably 5 meters? Yeah, 5 meters. Um, still. Thanks for watching. Um, as said, the links to the scripts run here will be in the description. It's a collection of about three different scripts and quite a number of libraries if you do want to use it yourself.